What's going on, everybody? American Leads, American Leads podcast. I'm Alex Simon. Just wanted to go live real quick. It's about one in the morning on the East Coast. Uh, just finished some some work, and then of course was thinking about what else but Leads United um, and our current form. I wanted to talk a little bit about the the three goals that were conceded. The first two, obviously, a soft penalty. Um, well, really, both of them were soft penalties. One was um, technically inside the box by Sinisterra. The second one was outside the box. Uh, that started off Tony's hat, hat trick. And then here's the third one, um, where the ball, both of our defenders, uh, drama, and uh, I believe this is uh, cock uh, initially whiff on the ball uh, the second picture there is morning Joe the second picture there is um, is the ball slipping past our defense amazingly if you look at that Melier actually gets to the ball before uh, before the the offensive player I don't know if that's Tony or not but eventually it does uh, – well, it's not Tony. Um, he does not get that. But um, Melier clears it, goes right to Tony. Tony nutmegs Urente here in the second picture – or the final picture. It is a nutmeg uh, to go around uh, Urente, who is just completely out of form. But, like, look at the third picture, the one on the lower left. I mean, Melier is the only defensive player pressing Tony at this point. We're, we're just so out. <laughs> I mean, it's almost comical. We're so out of form. We're so, like, just completely discombobulated that, that Melier is now pressing Tony. And he's, of course, going around him because Melier is never in that position, nor should he be. So... Anyways, I don't want to go through all the goals here. Let me see if I can bring this back up. Um, but the most important goal is the goal that never happened, which is goal six. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And there's Tony's chip in right over Cock, who's tra trailing back. Here's the goal, the screenshot of the goal, of which Cock um, obviously plays in the – the um, the Brentford offensive player. So now you have goal four. That was obviously right after we uh, scored Rocca's goal. They even have the graphic up. Rocca, 79th man. <laughs> First career Premier League goal. And then moments later, we can see again. Here is the fifth goal. Uh, obviously, Urente is pressed. And look at where he is. I've, I've put an arrow on him. He's just now starting to fall down. Look at um, look at Tyler Adams. Like seriously, he's kind of like you know how did Tyler Adams catch him? But I think in a last minute attempt, Urente is going down trying to cry a foul. Anyways, he's in. Um, that's goal five at nine, minute 90 and 50 seconds. And this is the most, this is the goal. So like the first two goals, you can kind of, you can kind of, can't excuse, but they were, they were both soft in my opinion. And one was a heck of a strike by Tony. And then the following three goals after that were just terrible gaffes that you just don't normally see leads make that bad of a, of a mistake. Um, and specifically cock playing in the, the, the Brentford players just, it just should have been off sides, but anyways, and I think there's some camera angles that even still show it as, uh, as being touched by Brentford. So I, I'll digress, but this is the one that's actually, you just keep seeing, and this is at minute 92 and they're in again. And here's, the problem. This is, I believe, a counter press or a counter attack. And look at all the leads players because we like to compress on one side of the pitch. It's leaving uh, 
ailing and 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 really that fullback all the time we can look at it time and time again whether it's ailing or cock in the last game against brentford or i'm um, trying to think um you know rasmus christensen they're out in no man's land and he's facing the defender and he's got basically three people to choose is he going to press the ball to make sure that it leaves this player or it's basically, it's either at least two on one or three on one. Well, where does the ball go? The ball goes right to Tony, Tony here. And then it's a shot on goal and it's really a hero save by Melier. Melier claws this ball away. And this is the goal. This would have been goal six. This is the goal you see happening against Leeds all day, all almost every game. There's there's opportunities and chances here because it, it's a switch ball, but it's not like a switch ball like I was talking to Michael earlier today. It's not like a switch ball where you see it's like across the field. It's a switch ball that you see. This is like relatively like in their box in the final third. This is a an, an area where we should be set up to at least put a man mark. We should at least have a body on a body here and and this is the this is the weakness of Jesse Marsh's system that's so that is concerning to me. Where I think if we can't have a clean sheet, I mean you take the Chelsea game out of it. Chelsea, I don't know what was wrong with them, and I Tuchel's obviously gone. But if you take the Chelsea game out of it, th this is even in our preseason. This and going back to last year, this was a problem. The sequence. So. Um, yeah, basically that's my my point. I wanted to finish with um, with when I talked to Michael uh, about it on our on our stream. We didn't have time to. I had to get get it uh, get it uh, get going. But um, yeah, so I don't know. Until that is really fixed, that's my concern. What is my prediction for the uh, for the Brent? for the uh, Forest game. I actually think we're going to win because I think Forest are going to come out. I think Llorente is dropped. I think Cooper comes in. I think we can see because that's the kind of form we're in. And I think that um, – I think we can see one goal, but I like Leeds' chances to be aggressive and score three goals in this game. Who are the goals coming from? I'm going to go Aronson. I'm going to go – I'm going to go Rocca to keep his form, and I think we score on a set piece. That's the key for us. We have to continue to score and be dangerous on set pieces. And I'm going to go with Pascal to score on a set piece. Um, it's going to be interesting if Furpo comes into this game at all, if he decides to give him, I don't know, 20 minutes, um, how he uses alien and drama because I guess Rasmus Christensen is out. Um, and how he uses his strikers, who is the first to come out on the front line. Last time it was uh, Harrison. Harrison's an incredible threat through um, his dead balls. His de him and Aronson standing over the dead ball, I think, is great. Uh, you get the in-swinger, the out-swinger. Um, so we need to score on a set piece here for me against Forrest, and i like us to win 3-1 at home on Monday night. Um, again, I just think Forrest is going to come out. They'll want to be the aggressor. They like to have the ball. We like to counter press on the ball. And I think we're going to create some good opportunities there. And I think, I think Jesse's got the fire underneath his rear end. Um, so I don't think obviously just conceding five last week was just a nightmare. And, um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. I wanted to just get on here, do a little bit of a breakdown of this particular goal sequence that we keep seeing. This would have been goal six against Brentford, and it's the switch ball. It's a it's a counterattack with Brentford. Our players are all on one side of the pitch. You see Ailing at the top of the screen, really in no man's land, but it doesn't matter if it's Ailing, whoever the 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 right back is or the left back is is caught in this position where they're like uh <laughs> who do i cover their instinct is to uh joseph's for for uh, a forest win disappointed with any other result 
Forest didn't win, disappointed with any of it. Yeah, we have to win. Yeah, a draw would be catastrophic. But um, but yeah, uh, this is the goal. Goal six would have been six is the most concerning goal uh, for me for for Leeds. The two goals again. I said the two goals um, at uh, in the beginning were dead balls. You tip your cap to Tony. One was a soft penalty. And then the, the three after that were, I went through them, but they're basically like just complete gaffes. It's like, you know, you rent a night horror show for two of them. And then one of them cock played in the, the, the ball. It was kind of a freak thing. Um, so like you can kind of, even it's five goals, you can kind of have like a reason, a reasonable explanation for all of them. Um, but this goal, it would have been goal six, is the thing that keeps coming up for Jesse Marsh and Leeds United. It's the right back completely caught out between two players, maybe three players. He's got his, his, his back facing Tony here. Tony's just waiting for the ball. Gets the ball, and Melier has a hero save. And we're asking Melier to do these these miraculous saves a little bit too much. Um, he's a good goalkeeper. He's the best in my, I mean, I'm biased. He's the best pure shot stopper in the league, but we have to set up the back line better. We need to have like a man on man. Everybody needs to be covered here and we're caught with our pants down too much for me. Um, so I'm hoping three, one Monday night, get the victory. I got to go to sleep. Marching on together, leads, leads, leads. Like, subscribe, etc. Talk to you soon.